Our next speaker is Nicole Rhodes from Bloodworks. I just don't know, is it Bloodworks Research Institute, Bloodworks Northwest? You don't know. She doesn't even know. Okay, fine. All right. <laughs> Changes by the wind. Here we go. Do you want it on what format? Is this okay? Thank you. Okay. Thank you for having me and supporting me to be here today and um, present our project on high-density lipoprotein and the effect on VWF-induced microvascular thrombosis um, in vivo. I'm really happy to be here and be supported by the CBR today. Thank you. Um, so, as we all know, von Willebrand factor is a multimeric glycoprotein stored in um, platelet alpha, granule, alpha granules and weibel polyed bodies of endothelial cells and it's known to mediate platelet adhesion. Under shear stress um, and upon endothelial activation, VWF will self-associate into strands and facilitate platelet aggregation. The metalloprotease ADMTS13 cleaves VWF multimers to regulate, VW, regulate thrombosis and prevent excessive platelet VWF thrombi. ADMTS13 deficiency leads to increased VWF-mediated microvascular thrombosis and eventual organ ischemia. Our group, our group previously showed that von Willebrand factor self-association can be attenuated by high-density lipoprotein uh, in vitro under shear stress. HDL has known anti-adhesive and anti-thrombotic properties that may have implications in cardiovascular diseases. However, um, the effect of VDO HDL needs to be further studied in vivo to determine the effect of VWF-mediated thrombosis. Um, here we use microvascular thrombosis models and arterial thrombosis models to observe the anti-thrombotic effects of HDL through VWF in vivo. Um, so the first model that I want to show is um, a recombinant VWF infusion, and we observed in the Cremaster microvasculature of ADMTS13 deficient mice. Um, we infused ADMTS13 deficient mice with recombinant VWF intravenously to induce self-association of endothelial released VWF and platelet VWF string formation in the Cremaster microcirculation. We observed increased platelet VWF string formation, and many of the microvessel vessels um, became fully occluded while we observed for up to um, 90 minutes with intravital microscopy. And these effects did persist up to 90 minutes. Um, however, when we pretreated Adam TS13 deficient mice with 100 mg per keg of human purified high density lipoprotein, um, we did not observe vessel occlusion, and the number of platelet VWF strings was significantly decreased uh, compared to untreated ADMTS13 deficient mice. In addition, as shown in the bottom video, there are fewer VWF platelet strings, and the platelets that do adhere are mostly individual platelets, and it's a very like short-lived effect. Um, next, we used a well-established model of VWF-mediated thrombosis by inducing um, endothelial activation with a calcium topical application of calcium ionophore to the mesenteric venules of ADMTS13 deficient mice, and we observed an increase, in, a significant increase in um, large VWF platelet platelet ultra-large VWF thrombi and um, a, a delay in uh, vessel clearance time. However, when we pretreat the mice with high-density lipoprotein, the effect was significantly attenuated by, we did not observe as many large platelet thrombi and the time to thrombus resolution was significantly um, decreased. Uh, the next model we used was 
a laser injury model in the cremaster microvasculature of wild type mice. Uh, in this image, the platelets are fluorescently labeled in green and the fibrin is fluorescently labeled in red. Um, and we observed the effect of HDL pretreatment on the arterial thrombosis. Uh, HDL pretreatment notably attenuated platelet accumulation and fibrin formation in response to laser injury. In addition, HDL pretreatment destabilized the clot formation and the, there were frequent emboli. So the platelets that do adhere are more transient in this model as well. Um, lastly, we use intravital microscopy to observe the effect of high-density lipoprotein on carotid artery thrombosis induced by ferric chloride. Um, wild -type mice, in wild-type mice, they reach to full vessel occlusion around 5 to 10 minutes. However, when we pretreated wild-type mice with high-density lipoprotein, we found that occlusion time was significantly delayed. In addition, the clot that does form is more unstable. There's um, increased embolization and um, more platelet aggregates, individual platelet aggregates. Uh, in conclusion, we found that using intravital, we use intravital microscopy to find that HDL attenuates VWF self-association and VWF-mediated thrombosis in vivo. HDL has an anti antithrombotic effect by inhibiting VWF self-association, preventing thrombosis in microvasculature and large vessels. Targeting VWF self-association using HDL could be a new approach to treat thrombotic disorders. This implies that increasing the plasma HDL concentration may be a new strategy to prevent and treat microvas microvascular thrombosis and or tissue hypoperfusion. Thank you. Yeah, be beautiful videos. Thank you. Uh, so the amount of HDL used in your experiments, how far is that or related to the real HDL amount what we have in our blood? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think it's, it's pretty concentrated, purified from the human plasma. So it's I most likely exactly. way over what we have? I think so, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Over here. Um, Hi. So nice talk. I'm Thank wondering you. if this is specific to HDL or have you like tried a similar thing with LDL or VLDL, for instance? Um, yeah, we already tried LDL. Um, we used the ionophore method uh, model and that was published in blood. Um, LDL causes significant thrombosis and large platelet VWF strings. Um, and we use wild-type mice for that. In wild-type mice, there's a very, very short-lived effect, and it's um, much, it's prolonged when you treat with LDL. Okay, and then do you have any idea on the mechanism of this HDL? Like, does it just bind to the recombinant VWF and sequester it, or any ideas there? Um, I think the main idea that we have going right now is that HDL, um, HDL binds to the scavenger receptor, SRB1, um, and prevents the release from the weibo-plate bodies. Thanks. Um, HDLs in clinical trials right now is a uh, as a delivery mechanism for certain drugs in atherosclerosis. So do you think that um, HDL might uh, be putting patients at a, at a bleeding risk because they can't form a, a clot, a normal clot at, at points of injury? Uh, we haven't looked at any bleeding models yet. We haven't tried like a tail bleeding assay or um, uh, intravital microscopy, but I think that could be something interesting to look at. Um, in line with that question, do you know if the, um, um, patients who have elevated HDL levels, do they suffer any consequences as far as you know? I don't know, but don't know. Okay. I would assume. Maybe not. Maybe. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, thanks very much. Thank you.